The transfer guru himself, Fabrizio Romano, has given a huge insight into what is going to be happening with incomings and outgoings at Tottenham Hotspur this summer. It's going to be big and he's talked about it and I will be getting into exactly what Romano said and some of the rumours that have been going around in terms of players coming into Spurs in today's episode of the podcast. I'm just going to give you a little heads up as to how these shows are going to go in terms of daily content. Now, on Monday, I'm going to give a thorough uh, whole episode on Spurs rumours and news from the previous week. And then the other daily shows will be generic transfer rumours from all over the Premier League and around the world, starting, of course, with my beloved Tottenham Hotspur every day. I will not leave you without your Tottenham Hotspur transfer news and stories, but I'll also be talking about the other rumours that are affecting the Premier League. Guys, thank you so much for your support. Please do drop this video a like. Also, go over to the podcast platforms, be that Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Give me a follow or subscribe and a rating there. And, of course, press subscribe on YouTube. If you're listening on the podcast platforms, please come to YouTube. It's at Barnaby Slater underscore. So let's get going. As I mentioned, Fabrizio Romano, he has said the following. There will be a lot of movement around Tottenham in the summer. We could see eight, nine, or even ten players leaving. There will also be signings, maybe four or five players. The expectation is for Spurs to be really busy. Well, that's music to our ears, isn't it? I've certainly done a lot of videos where I've talked about the reality of the Tottenham squad not only being a little bit bloated, but also having a lot of players in there who do not have the attributes that Big Ange Postacoglu needs to play his brand of football. And if we could manage to get that eight, nine or ten players out of the door, then we are talking about the possibility of really kind of streamlining that squad and having a really young, hungry, potential filled group of players who are all technically able to play Ange's particular, specific brand of football. Let's get into some of the transfer rumours then that have been coming up over the last few days and the and the previous week at Tottenham. First up, Tottenham are looking at uh, Ren forward Desiree Due. Now, it's Desiree, he's got an accent on his E, but it's spelt desire. How good would it be to have a desire and a destiny in our squad but he's 19 years old Desiree French Ivory Coast heritage really exciting young player he plays as a number 10 or a left-sided forward that makes sense obviously doesn't it because we know we brought Timo Werner in on loan he didn't set the world alight although he did pretty well I think he'd make a good squad player I said that I know that can be controversial amongst a number of uh, Tottenham fans however we've all been talking about Everybody on the kind of Spurs po- uh, podcast that I listen to, we've all been talking about needing a kind of dribbly winger, someone who can do something a bit different, who can beat a man as well as find good passing options. And it looks like Desiree Due is the kind of player who has those characteristics. He's kind of a flair player, very kind of Tottenham in terms of his want to take people on and be exciting on the ball. He's a dribbler. He's got really good acceleration. His technique is outstanding. And as is his ability to control the ball in really tight spaces. And that is, of course, something that Ange really looks for. He also, though, has great vision. And I've seen a lot of clips of him making some really good through balls, often when maybe it would be easier for him to keep it. But he's always got his head up, which is very exciting. And uh, he's kind of one of those players who's got a bit of a low center of gravity as well. So the negative side to that is, of course, he's not going to be a player who comes in and is able to help us defensively in set pieces. Um, But... There are other uh, rumours of players potentially coming in who are more like that. So I like the look of Desiree Due. There are a lot of clubs looking at him because he's a very talented boy playing well at Rennes this season. But again, a good example of, I think, how the recruitment team and Johan Langer are looking at the exact kind of players that we need to get in. The next rumours are that Tottenham still have uh, Hayden Hackney for Middlesbrough on their list. We talked a lot about him back in January, actually. He was on the list in January with Adam Wharton at Blackburn and of course we've seen how Adam Wharton actually ended up going to Crystal Palace having an incredible second half of the season and getting in the preliminary England Euro squad. Blackburn fans absolutely love Wharton, Palace fans now love him too and he was another example of a player who we were heavily linked with from the championship just like we were with Ezra back in the day when he was at QPR. We didn't pull the trigger, he went somewhere else and maybe it's something we regret. So Hayden Hackney is another one who could still be 
uh, potentially coming in Spurs. But added to that list from Middlesbrough is Rav Vandenberg. Now, I hadn't seen a lot about Vandenberg before, so I've been uh, looking at some of his stats and watching some of his clips. He's pretty exciting. Uh, uh, A Dutch centre-half or right-back, so versatile, which, of course, as we know, uh, Ange is desperate to get as many versatile players as he can. Really good on the ball, intercepts incredibly well, and, like I mentioned with the the previous player, Desiree Due, um, he is, Vandenberg is someone who attacks the ball really well. And when we're bringing players in, just like when we brought Radu Dragushin in, we need to add players to this squad who love heading the ball, love attacking the ball, and ideally will love, like Dragushin does, to protect his goalkeeper from set pieces. So Vanden, uh, Vandenberg could be an interesting one. He also marks really well and uh, only 20 years old. So in keeping with that kind of the return to the Spurs policy of buying young, hungry talent with potential that we can get to grow with the squad rather than maybe spending, uh, I don't know, 60, 70 million pounds on a centre-back trying to get... Which, which, let's face it, only kind of the biggest clubs who are willing to pay the biggest wages can do. I'm talking here about Liverpool. Actually, it kind of surprised me when that interview came out with Jurgen Klopp last week where he talked about, um, you know, how Liverpool don't spend much. But, of course, they did buy... 75 spend 75 million pounds on Van Dijk best center half in the world 75 million pounds on Allison best goalkeeper in the world uh, nearly 100 million pounds on Darwin Nunes I think uh, who is absolutely not the best striker in the world but Spurs are going about it a different way and I think that actually is something that Postacoglu would prefer he has said hasn't he he'd rather spend 50 million pounds on two players than 100 million pounds on one and I think the way that Tottenham are trying to redress their transfer policy uh, in terms of buying young and bringing up a young, raw, hungry team together is something that we had success with before, back in the day when we got kind of Vertonghen in and we got Walker in and we got Rose in and they all kind of grew together. I know a lot of fans won't be delighted about that and would like us to spend £100 million on one player, but I personally don't think it suits where we are as a club at the moment. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. You're very welcome to disagree. But uh, I think with Ange, it's perfect for us to kind of all grow as an exciting young team. I mentioned in some videos last week that uh, we do still have interest in Edison, the defensive midfielder from Atalanta, and Callum hudson Adoy at Forest. Those rumours are not going away. Although Alistair Gold did say that um, Tottenham may have cooled their interest somewhat in Callum hudson Adoy. Let's see what happens with those two. Some other Tottenham Hotspur news then. Uh, I'm sure you all have seen over the weekend that Tottenham are the Premier League 2 champions. They beat Sunderland in the playoff final there. Goal scored by Will Linkshire, who was also voted Premier League 2 player of the season. Well done, Spurs. I saw Ryan Mason did an Instagram post about it saying congratulations to all involved. Look, if I'm honest, I don't really know the realities of how the Premier League 2 kind of fits within the reality of bringing players through for Spurs' first team. Obviously, we've got a lot of really excellent under-18 players who have played some Premier League 2 football and have now got in towards the Spurs' first team squad and set up. Um, Mikey Moore, of course, is an example, and Alfie Devine did previously, and Jamie Donnelly, obviously. But we still seem to be quite far away from a through route coming from the 18s to the Premier League 2 side to the first team and we do need to get some academy players through into our first team it excites the fans it brings us together a lot more you know let's not forget how great it was when we had that group of players Harry Kane being the main one but also let's not forget Ryan Mason Stephen Colker Um, talk about Walker and Rose like they were bought very young but also into the academy uh, initially and the fans just do love it and so we need to improve in that way Lucas Bergvall talking about young talent. Lucas Bergvall, he's in his final few games at his Swedish club before he comes to Tottenham Hotspur. And to all intents and purposes, he is finishing his career in Sweden with a bang. He had yet another incredible performance for his club in the last few days. Scored two goals. One of them, if you haven't seen it, go and check it out. An absolutely stunning volley from the edge of the box. It was Paul Scholes-like. The the corner was sent in cleared out to the edge of the box about 19 20 yards out and Bergvall just hits it first time absolute rasper into the bottom kind of middle bottom left hand corner check it out if you haven't already I'm really excited to see Lucas Bergvall in pre-season he's a lot kind of taller and broader than I had him down for actually and that's exciting because the last young player who kind of at his age 18 years old really threatened the Spurs first team and came through unexpectedly was Delhi, and uh, he had that kind of 
strength on the ball and that height about him as well. And Bergwall, not a similar player, a lot more technical than Delhi. Now, you might be surprised at me saying that, but what I mean is Delhi was instinctively an incredibly brilliant technical player. Like, if he had to do it very quickly and just off the cuff, he could do anything, as was seen by that incredible Crystal Palace goal. But when he had a lot of time to think about something, he also wasn't great at the, the kind of easy technique of just a five-yard ball here or some easy control. Bergvall is the opposite to that. He's an absolute technician. He loves getting on the ball. He manipulates the ball with the inside and outside of his foot. He loves playing it around the corner into players, and he doesn't just stand and admire his balls either. He then goes off for the second ball. He reminds me a little bit of Luka Modric, like a taller Luka Modric. And if he could come in in the summer and have the kind of effect that Delhi had on the side when he came in in the Audi Cup. Do you remember in Munich, I was actually out there and they were, I think his first game for Spurs was against Real Madrid and he nutmegged Luka Modric and we were like, ah, uh-huh. kind of stood up and took note what a talent he was. I'm excited that maybe Lucas Bergvall could come in and do something similar. He's only young, so we shouldn't put too much expectation on him, but it's difficult, isn't it? Because we've clearly got one here and hopefully he comes in fearlessly in the summer and, uh, the players take note in training and think, huh, we've got a great player here. He's actually, Lucas Bergwald has been quoted uh, as talking about his forthcoming move in the last week. He says, now that it's so close, it's hard not to think about it. I'm incredibly excited and a little nervous as it should be. Sounds like he's got his head on his shoulders too. He comes in, I think, July the 1st. He's obviously been playing a lot of games, so he won't have as long a break as a lot of the players, but I'm sure the Spurs backroom staff and hierarchy will be careful with him make sure we don't overwork him and let him kind of integrate in seamlessly and uh, in the most healthy way possible very exciting stuff obviously it was the championship playoff final this weekend and Joe Roden who was on loan at Leeds his team lost in that final 1-0 to Southampton reason I bring this up is that I think worryingly may limit Leeds' ability to kind of pay the money that I imagine Daniel Levy is looking for for Roden as mad as this sound for, sounds for someone who hasn't really played hardly any minutes for Spurs, I imagine Levy would be looking for something around £20 million for Joe Roden. He's had a really good season at Leeds. He's been kind of the mainstay of their back line. The fans love him and the players love him there, and I think he's enjoyed it as well. However, I've said it before, um, I think a lot of those Spurs players in like the 8, 9 or 10 that we're looking to let leave the club, I think if we can get anywhere near £10 million for any of them, so I'm talking like Roden, Brian Hill, Pierre Hoiberg, any of those players, if you can get anywhere near £10 million, you snap their hand off and you say thank you, you know, it's you've been great stalwarts for the club, um, maybe not Brian Hill, but certainly when it comes to Hoiberg, and uh, we appreciate it, but you're not quite right for this style of football please, we're going to take this money and move on. So I think if Leeds can get anywhere near 10 million for Joe Roden, I would snap their hands off, basically. A story came out in the last few days about how Nike's Air Jordan brand are not going to do a collaboration with Tottenham on next season's kit because we're not in the Champions League. I wanted to talk about this because that is such a non-story. It's such a fake news story. Football kits, Premier League football kits, the big companies, the Nikes, Adidas, etc., They design the kit about two years minimum in advance. They really do. In fact, maybe sometimes even more, two or three years. So this story of them just deciding that they're not going to do an Air Jordan collab with Spurs because we didn't make it into the Champions League, it's absolute nonsense. And um, I just get fed up with, with people kind of pushing those stories because it's really easy to see the common sense of it and that it doesn't exist. So that was a bit of a disappointing one. Um... Our lovely, brilliant, excellent uh, what first season. I'm talking about Bakari, our goalkeeper here. I want to just give him loads of props because I've been so impressed with how he's done since he's come in, replacing a club legend in Hugo Lloris. And he's done an interview this week where he's opened up on some of his learnings from his first season in the Premier League. And I thought I'd read out some quotes for you because they're really interesting. He's such a grounded guy. I watched this interview and he's just, he's really eloquent and he speaks incredibly well. And he's very, very grounded and uh, he's not afraid to talk about things that have been difficult and he's also not a- afraid to talk about like what a dream it's been to become uh, a Premier League goalkeeper and and how grateful he is to have been given his chance at Spurs. So when asked specifically, I'm going to start with uh, what it was like being targeted from set pieces because obviously we talked a lot about that on our episodes this season. He says, uh, it's part of the challenge. It's a different culture, different football. In Italy, it's completely different in terms of how they deal with challenges on the goalkeeper. Maybe I didn't want to waste time adapting, but sometimes you have to be really honest with yourself and say, okay, 
Maybe I need just a bit of time to know how these sorts of tactics and especially set pieces work. So do you see what I mean? He's not afraid to say, okay, maybe I made a little bit of a mistake. Maybe I thought I was going to get a free kick every time I'm blocked off or every time I'm pushed by an opposition player while a corner is coming in. But he's realized he's not. And he's having to take it by the scruff of the neck and say, as an example, when Dragushin came in, Dragushin, you come here and you do this for me so I've got a free run at the set piece. It should have happened earlier, I think... Mile Jedinak should have realised this, had it got it into him earlier, but the important thing is that he's learned now, and I love the way he talks about it. Vicario says on his aims for next season under Ange Postacoglu, he says, This season we did good stuff, but next season we can do great stuff. We want to improve as footballers, as human beings. It's a big group of lads and a manager. We need to stick together and believe in what he asks of us. And if everyone does that, I'm looking forward to it. He goes on. I think with one more year of working together, I think some situations we can recognise and reach our best level. We just need to follow him 100% and try to do what he asks of us and then we'll see. Of course it's tough. The league is tough. And I think we just have to focus on winning each game and then the next one and the next one and then we'll see. It's a long season. I agree with him. If you remember that momentum from the first 10 games of the season, the eight wins and the two draws... I know it's weird to say, but if that Chelsea game hadn't happened, or if that che- if we'd gone 2-0 up in that Chelsea game when the when Sonny scored the second goal, <coughs> and it was disallowed, disallowed by VAR, and it was so tight. If we'd gone 2-0 up in that Chelsea game, I genuinely think, this might sound mad, but I genuinely think we could have put together a title challenge. At the very least, we would have done better than Aston Villa in fourth place. I'm so sure of it, but that game was just the perfect storm where... All that momentum kind of rolled into like being overly passionate, players going in too hard, getting sent off, getting injured then unluckily because everything just started falling apart. And I agree with what Vicario is saying here that if we can get that momentum again, starting from the beginning of the season, I could really imagine us going on a properly incredible run where we're we're really hard to stop. Um, Vicario has talked about his enforcers. Romero, Van de Ven and Dragushin in front of him. It is incredible. We conceded a lot of goals this season, but I really think our defenders were some of our best players and it wasn't individual mistakes that led to those goals. It was more like we didn't have the ability to keep the ball in the front third that then stopped the ball from in transition coming at our defenders so quickly. So Vicario, when asked about his enforcers, Romero, Van de Ven and Dragushin said, every one of those lads is outstanding. They have different characteristics as players, but every one of them has been incredible during the season. Cutie and Mickey have played a bit more than Radu, who came in in January. He's a very good lad. He's tough, and he wants to improve. He's got a good mentality. Cutie, well, I don't need to use many words on Cutie. He won the World Cup in 2022, so I'm not the right person to speak about him. He's a massive player, and Mickey, of course, has been outstanding. In the way we play, with the high line, his speed has been very, very important to us. I'm very proud. I can say they are the best defenders I've played with, so I'm very proud of that. Praise to them for a big season, but next season we want to do better. I love that. I love how he's talking about that unit. And any successful club needs to have a unit who believe in each other and trust in each other at the back. And I think with those guys, and of course, Destiny Odoggi and Pedro Porro, who, by the way, Pedro Porro been announced in the last few days that he has not been included in Spain's Euro squad. So he'll get a good break this summer. Selfishly, as a Spurs fan, I'm glad he's getting a bit of a break. I don't know what you think of this, guys, but selfishly, I kind of hope James Madison doesn't make it into the final England 26 because I think he really needs a rest and a break after that um, injury kind of ridden season that he's had. And I want to see him at his best at Spurs uh, in preseason. But if he does get in the squad, good for him. He is an incredible player. But I loved what Vicario was saying about his teammates there. Really good. Sonny, our captain, has also released an Instagram post about his feelings on the season and looking forward. He has said, he's, I'm finally home. Resting up, looking back at the year, a season of ups and downs, but a season of progress. The first thing I think of is how we've grown stronger and closer as a team and a club. We have an excitement around the place looking forward to the next few years. We're going to rest up over the summer and come out next season even stronger. A special message of thanks to all of you, the supporters. This season we have had some of the most special atmospheres I've experienced yet. As my first year as captain, to be leading the boys is a privilege and something I'm so proud of. I'm looking forward to seeing you all again soon. Lots of love, Sonny. Now, I've seen a number of people on X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it, over the past two weeks or or so saying that Sonny shouldn't be captain and that the captaincy should be moved over to Christian Romero. Now look, I can see why you think that because Romero is a tough tackling leader. He's undoubtedly a leader. However, think about how that would make Sonny feel if you took the armband off him. 
Absolutely don't do it. I think what Ange did to make Sonny the captain and the figurehead and then have his uh, vice captains being Madison and Romero, I think it's smart and I think it's working well and I love the way the three of them work together as a leadership group. So I personally think stick with it. But let me know in the comments if you think anything with our captaincy group should change. Finally, just a quick one from Destiny of Doggy. He's also released a message on Instagram. He says, it's a wrap on a season of highs and lows. One I've learned new lessons throughout that I can't wait to build upon come August. We go again towards our goals now to recover and relax. How lucky are we to have Destiny of Doggy? What a talent he is. I remember when I went to the um, uh, the Shakhtar Donetsk friendly Harry Kane's last game last summer. It was the first time I'd seen Destiny or Doggy in the flesh, and I was like, wow, we have got one here. What a player he is, and uh, it's a shame he's got his injury and he's going to miss out on the Euros, but again, selfishly, rest up Destiny, get that injury sorted out, and come back with a bang. And if Spurs can make some really good signings, especially in that kind of defensive midfield group and in the forwards where we can maybe sustain our pressure going forward more then there won't be so many times where a doggy is having to chase back behind him for transitional kind of long diagonals because we will sustain our pressure up front score more goals and concede not as many guys thank you so much for watching and listening to this episode of the podcast i hope you've appreciated it drop the video a like if you haven't already please do press subscribe and as i said every monday now i'll do a big roundup of the spurs transfer rumors and news and then on every other day i will be doing transfer rumors and news from the premier league and the wider field but also always starting with any new tottenham news we have because they are the best team in the league thank you so much also please do go over to the podcast platforms give me a follow and a subscribe there and if you want to become a member only a pound a month or a patreon member all the details in the description box really appreciate your support thank you so much and of course come on you spurs